Now, right, welcome, ladies and gents. This is the Last of Us episode three review. Full spoilers. Uh, have to talk full spoilers for this episode because it, the whole episode is centered around something which is a break from the games. Very, very different. Very, very different. This is a beautiful episode. This is a beautiful episode. Very, very good. Well shot. Uh, in fact, the closing shot is a perfect example of great lens use. The sort of artifacting around the sides, the almost sort of vignetting. Uh, slight fisheye, kind of. Beautiful lens choice. Sorry about the mic. Beautiful lens choice. So this was uh, very well shot, well directed, great episode overall. But I want to talk about the changes to the game, or from the game, first, because I have this article here. This is all about Frank and Bill. Uh, Frank, played by Nick Offerman, and Frank... Uh, Bill, played by Nick Offerman, and Frank Murray Bartlett. Now, in the game, uh, they are not lovers. They're just... They, I, I don't think they're lovers anyway. Uh, and one of them kills himself to get away from Bill. Frank kills himself to get away from Bill. And Bill's there, uh, left at the end. Not likeable in any way, shape, or form. And in this, they become lovers. They become married. And they sort of joint suicide at the end. To, you know, through old age, they decide to... To kill themselves, they have made their peace with the Lord, or whatever you want to call it. They've just made their peace with their existence, especially Bill. He had a purpose, he found his purpose, and as his purpose, which was his partner, his loved one, Frank, chose to kill himself, he wanted to go as well. And it was beautifully shot, beautifully written. It's a very, very well put together love story but it is different from the games and I thought we would touch on that first before we go into the review. So there is basically a 20 year relationship between Bill and Frank. Uh, we watch the former's life play out from start of the outbreak to his first meeting uh, with the man who would go on to become his lover. His, not just his lover, it was his loved one. They would survive arguments, attacked by raiders. Uh, Frank eventually falls pretty ill. It looks like he has a degenerative sort of neurological nervous disease, uh, maybe, I, I, I couldn't I couldn't put my hand, my finger on kind of what, what one it was, but it was a degenerative disease, he almost was becoming, you know, paralysed by the looks of it, uh, and he chose to kill himself. Now, you know, they do that, however, in the games, Joel and Ellie meet Bill, who is not likeable, and... You know, eventually we learn that Frank killed himself in order to get away from his fellow survivor shortly after being infected. So this is a complete departure from the games, but one which was very well done. And they do explain this to Variety. Uh, Craig Marzin said, It seemed like such a rich and yet unseen story. It afforded us a chance to look at how time passed, but also to ask a question, what happens if you're safe? I was just fascinated by the idea of Bill. As somebody who had created a place of safety, and then here comes Frank crashing in. From there, it just went differently in my head than what was there in the game. Uh, Neil Druckmann chimed in and said Craig had some crazy ideas about what we should do with these two characters. As soon as he pitched them, I fell in love. It was just beautiful. It felt it was a worthwhile change because of what we were getting in return. Uh, and then, you know, as the why Frank died... From an unnamed disease rather than the infect infection ravaging the world, Marzin would say, you can't always present death as this failure. Sometimes it's just a natural conclusion. That is part of growing old. It was important to me to show the span of a relationship accounting for that. And uh, it's not just being presented as a tragic loss, but rather the culmination of something beautiful. And you know what? It actually really, really was. Bill, played by Nick Offerman, uh, was a great departure from his usual stern, curt, quick-witted or sort of sarcastic self. You know, he plays quite comedic-based characters in a lot of stuff. Uh, I thought he did such a great job in this. Uh, Nick Offerman needs to be in more serious roles. And, you know, like, he really... He he great range in this. Absolutely beautiful range. Really, really, really great acting from Nick Offerman. Uh, Murray Bartlett, I need to go and look and see what I recognise him in. But he was really good in this as well. Uh, and they bounced off one another fantastically. Their sort of chemistry worked great. The set piece of this enclosed, almost like a cul-de-sac area, was great. Really, really, really beautifully done. And everything that they had created and established for themselves seemingly would have worked, uh, you know, if this was playing out in real life. It was just a well-put-together story. 
outside of that, the flashback sequence where we see Joel and Ellie coming up to, you know, I, I don't want you to go ahead. Ellie's like, why? Is there something that can hurt me? No. Obviously, failed. Joel failed to account for the mental faculties of a child seeing hundreds of dead, hundreds, hundreds of skeletons. And then learning what had happened is that they were being rounded up, evacuated to a QZ, a quarantine zone. But if it was full, then they were put to ditches and shot. And it was brutal. Brutal because we hone in for the flashback. We hone in on a dress, a green dress. And we see a mother holding their child. And obviously we know what's going to come because we see the, the skeleton. And, and it's really, really brutal. And that obviously then proceeds into our story uh, of Bill, played by Nick Offerman. Uh, this was a really, really good episode. Really, really good episode. A bit of a slow down pace, a bit of a world builder. And it shows the world crumbling around Joel, uh, as well as the world just falling apart. But almost at peace, you know. This story of Bill and Frank, I think, worked really, really well. I just think, yeah, I, I, I think uh, good departure from the games. And you know what actually kind of gives me a little bit of hope for what they're going to do moving forwards with The Last of Us Part 2, if they are going to change stuff. It, it looks like they're very happy to change stuff, you know. And because of that, that does give me some hope. But I'm very excited to see what happens. This is a, a pretty weak, light episode on The Infected. And that's good because to me, it shows that Craig Marzin, of course he does understand this, by the way. But it shows to me he understands that less is more. You know, we saw one like half turn clicker thing in this episode underneath a bunch of rubble. And that was it. You know, less is more. Because the next episode, I'm sure we'll see more. And then they'll be very impactful. But again, not to blow smoke up Nick Offerman's uh, Frank uh, Murray Bartlett's asses too much. Let's go back to Pedro Pascal and his range when he found out that obviously they had both committed suicide. It was really quite great. You know, this is showing why Pedro Pascal is... Uh, an acclaimed actor is someone that is getting these roles. He is someone that is wanted uh, in Hollywood and obviously HBO. You know the, the the small screen as well. Although that's no, it's nothing bad anymore. You know the small screen is putting huge budgets on stuff um, and putting together cinematic masterpieces. Which you know again, some people would say that this was forced agenda that they were changing stuff for forced agenda. I don't I don't see this as any of that. I will say it's a bit uh, convenient. That you know, at the end of the the end of the world, the apocalypse, uh, two two guys find one another that want to, you know, um, spend their life together. I mean, I will say, obviously, that's a bit convenient, of course, uh, and some, you know, I would understand why some people think, oh, it's the agenda and all this nonsense. Yeah, I can see that, but it's not conveyed in that way. It's beautifully put together, beautifully put together. Like, there's no reason not to appreciate that as a love story. There just isn't. Uh, it's well done. Very, very well done. So I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. Let me know down below. Are you looking forward to the next episode? I keep like kind of wanting to watch the previews, but then I'm like, oh, nah, I'm not going to. Got to keep it fresh. Like my shave. Like my hair. Anyway, cheers, guys. Take care. <laughs>